Hey guys, Kevin Eastman for Empire Season 2, Episode 3, Fires of Heaven. And obviously, I was really looking forward to this episode. I mean, this season has pretty much been on fire. They've had two amazing episodes, and this episode was also really great. My only real complaint with this episode is that it felt more like a season premiere than it did um, the first two episodes. The first episode kind of felt more like a prologue. Like, it's kind of like, here's where we're actually going to go in Season 2, and now we're actually seeing it. This felt definitely more like a premiere than it did an actual, just another episode. Um... Which is fine, definitely. It made sense because, obviously, Lucius is now back from prison and that whole storyline is over. Well, it's not over, but he's, you know, back from prison, of course. And I have to say, this was a great episode. I definitely really loved it. Not as good as last week's. Last week's is still, like, probably the best episode of this entire show. But I still thought this was a very powerful episode. I really liked it. And uh, some really, really great scenes in this episode. And again, really, they are on a roll. So we start with um, basically Roxanne, and of course Roxanne was the one person that knew that knows that Lucius is in fact you know um, did in fact kill Bunky, and that he is accused of it. You know everyone else thinks he was wrongfully accused, and that he you know Lucius is able to manipulate people so well that he's basically made everyone think that it was an accident what he did, which of course it wasn't. We know that he did kill Bunky. We've seen in the first episode. That's kind of been the big thing in this show, and I like what she says. She tells him straight out that they should not trust Lucius, that Lucius is, um, you know, he's gonna be held accountable, he's not above the law, and the press then runs to Lucius and as if he knows that Roxanne is running for state AG and is trying to make the case against her career, and they announce that Lucius can't go back to Empire as condition of his bail, and basically he's can't run it at this point, which I thought was, I really liked that twist, actually. I thought he was going to get it right back, but no, it actually shows that Lucius can't get everything he wants, even though we, you know there's a way that Lucius is going to fix this, because that's just how Lucius is. I like that Lucius was actually limited to sort of something. I thought that was definitely very well done. I really enjoyed that. So they announce Lucius can't go back to Empire, and Cookie comes to see Hakeem and finds him with, um, with basically Valentina, and Cookie tells him that his dad is out of jail, and Hakeem is calmed him, but Cookie smacks him for having sex with Valentina, and I definitely thought that was very funny, um, I loved her little rant about how he can't, you can't have sex with the girl, with, uh, the lead singer, and Cookie screams him to come on since, uh, to come on since they need to go see Sway, who Sway is the guy that, of course, is going to give them, uh, you know, full approval of, uh, Lucius, Dy uh, Lucius Dynasty, Lion, Dy Di Lion Dynasty, he's gonna give them approval of that, and Thirsty then talks to Lucius, so, you know, Thurston, um, Lucius is lawyer, he's back, and he talks to Lucius about the terms of the bail, he can't go into Empire or he'll go back to jail, and Jamal is with him, and he speaks to the group on the steps of Empire, and basically, Roxanne lurks in her car nearby, watching this go down, and Lucius talks about Empire taking over the music world, and says, soon the world won't know, won't say the word music without using the word Empire, and basically, you can tell that Lucius is gonna get Empire back to what it needs to be, and I definitely really like seeing that. So Hakeem is on Sway's radio show, singing one of his new songs, and Cookie videos it on her phone. The song is about his dad plotting and his mom writing for him, and Sway tells Hakeem that's a bold move the way he busted out of Empire, because, you know, he's not with Empire right now. He's with um, Cookie for, you know, Lion Dynasty, and Thurston gets a call from Sway, who asks for Lucius, and Sway asks why he didn't give him the exclusive on Snitch Bitch, then says that he's with Hakeem talking about his leaked album, and Lucius says that Hakeem has a lot of growing up to do, and that he needs to, you know, because Lucius obviously thinks that there's no way that Hakeem would betray him like that, and obviously he knows that he is obviously more powerful than Hakeem, and that's not going to end well for Hakeem. And Hakeem says his dad didn't stop the leak because he was prison, and he's running circles around him, and that's why it worked out as well as it did. And I like seeing Hakeem kind of go against his father here. That's something I definitely really like seeing, especially last season, since, you know, again, you go back to last season where Lucius was basically making Hakeem this big star. Hakeem's now realizing that that's not what's important. He wants Empire, he wants it for himself, and I definitely really like seeing that. And I like the process that he's also trying to become this big star. Definitely, I really like that. So... Sway talks about Lion Dynasty, and Akeem talks about Mirage Atras, his, um, his Hispanic girl group, that's the name of them, and Sway says to bring them this week, and Cookie shakes his head, shakes her head, no, but Hakeem agrees, and 
they're not ready, obviously. So Cookie's obviously freaking out because they ha they're not ready. They the girl group hasn't even met each other, and this could end up really, really badly for them. So Jamal's with Michael, Rhonda, Cookie, Andre, and Hakeem. They're at an award an awkward family dinner, and Andre asks if Lucius wanted them to kill them all at once. And Lucius comes in and he says, Tomorrow they're at war. Cookie drinks her champagne, gives him a cold look. They all eat in silence, and it's kind of a funny scene. Nobody's talking, obviously, which is understandable. I mean, he's just come back from prison. They really, none of them want anything to do with Lucius. They don't want him back there. The only person that really wants anything to do with him is Jamal, um, which is understandable because of the bond they've made. And other than that, though, nobody really wants to talk to Lucius at all right here. You can just tell that they would rather just him go back to prison. They don't want him here, and... Basically, we see they all eat in silence, but then Cookie asks why he's not eating and asks if he poisoned them, and he says that's too easy. He says he had time to think about them while he was gone and how they tried to band together to destroy him. And Andre says sorry, and Cookie says not to apologize, and Lucius says if they dismantle Lion Dynasty, all will be forgiven, including the leaked album and hostile takeover. But you know, of course, they're not going to disable it because they want to go against Lucius. They want to prove they can be just as strong without him. Even though it might not be true, they want to think that maybe they can do this without him, that he doesn't need to control them, and I definitely really like seeing that. So Lucius says they're family at the end of the day, and he wants them together, and, you know, he's definitely, again, doing his thing of manipulating them, but also feeling like he cares, which you can tell that Lucius probably doesn't care, but he is just making him seem like he cares. And Cookie obviously doesn't buy one second of it. She says no. She says she's going to save her sons and build something nice for them. And Lucius says they failed. He calls them his ex-wife, ex-CFO, ex-son, and ex-wannabe girl. And he says they all got one last chance. He tells them to go to let go of their pride. And Cookie says she doesn't know what happened while he was locked up, but she's fine without him. And she literally pulls the tablecloth off and dumps the dishes on his floor. That was great. I love that. I love seeing Cookie do that to him. That's totally something Cookie would do. And I know we've seen that in the promos, but I've been waiting for that scene ever since we saw it, and I absolutely loved it, and it definitely not disappoint. So, Anika's then at the club, and Anika I thought was definitely very interesting in this episode, because we haven't really gotten a specific thing for Anika to do um, in this season yet, and it really seems like now we're really starting to get something for her to do. Lucius is setting up a party, and she asks what he wants from her, and he mentions her and Hakeem, because he knows, of course, that her and Hakeem slept together, and he knows what happened between them, and she says Hakeem is not her type, then he says he wants her help with Lion Dynasty, and she asks why she would betray them for him, and he says he knows things can't be good for her there, and says it must be hell working with Cookie, and honestly, he does bring up some good points here. Obviously, if Anika were to work with Cookie, you know that they would definitely clash and things would not end well for them, and Anika says it's no better with him, which it really isn't, and Lucius says Lion Dynasty will fail, and she knows it. She says if he, if it, if um, it has a chance, and says Hakeem is coming into his own, and Lucius says that Hakeem is coming back to Empire, and asks how it will play out with her and Cookie, and basically... You're not really sure what she's going to do here. I wasn't sure if she was going to listen to Lucius, and I thought that was definitely very interesting. So then we see Mirage et Troy. They're basically trying to rehearse at the studio. Um, Mirage et Troy, I think their name is Mirage et Troy, and they're rehearsing at the studio. Cookie says that the hook just is not very good. They're not really projecting it, that she doesn't really buy it. And she, obviously, she's really pissed at Hakeem because she didn't plan on this girl group having any sort of performance. And you can tell that they're not really ready at all. And she and Hakeem are arguing. He says he's a producer and to let him produce. And she says he has put her name on the line with Sway by saying they can bring them in three days. And Valentina is giving her as much sass as possible. And Cookie's calling her a bitch. And Hakeem says to trust him. And Cookie walks away. And they start singing again, and basically Cookie admits it's good and says they need some choreography, and then they got a gold mine, and basically she thinks this could actually work out. She's starting to think that maybe this might work. So Lucha sips a, a drink at lunch with Andre. He asks why Andre wanted to see him. He talks merger and the acquisition of 200 urban radio stations, and Andre says he wants back into Empire, because as we know, the plan is for them to prove why Andre would be a better person to run Empire, but Lucius doesn't want him to be there, obviously, and Andre says he's trying to man up and no one else is doing it, which is true. No one is really trying to take Empire from Andre, you know, from uh, Jamal and really stepping up and doing it except Andre, and even Jamal admits that Andre would be better for it, so obviously he's really the only one doing something about it. And Lucia says he can hire 50 other people who can do what he does, and he says Andre has to bring something no one else can bring, and Andre asks, like, what? And Lucia tells him to prey on it, and Jamal calls Lucius and says the producer he sent him sucks, and show and some girls showed up with some thugs, and said Lucia was going to sign her, and it's Frank's daughter, um, Frank Gather's daughter, she's back, and 
I thought it was interesting what they did with her because you see how basically they're, you know, Cookie and, and Lucius are definitely trying to one-up each other. They're trying to do something, you know, they're both trying to do something that the other group doesn't have. You know, Lion Dynasty has um, the girl group while Lucius might have Frank Gather's daughter. And we know that she's very talented because, of course, we saw in the premiere. And I knew that she was going to come back into play in this somehow, and I'm glad that she came back in this episode. So Lucius tells him to sign her right away and says she's very important. And Jamal tells Frida that they want to sign her, and she gets annoyed and that Lucius, you know, that Lucius isn't there. Then says that her father told her not to trust Lucius anyway. And she walks out even though Lucius said to sign her. And Jamal tells Becky that Lucius told her musically she's everything to him. And Jamal asks where that leaves him. And Lucius then shows Jamal a video of Frida and asks how he let her go. Then says Hakeem would have signed her. And Jamal says he's a real artist and has held all this down while he was inside. And he calls Frida a hood rat. And Lucius says he was going to revive Gutter Life Records with her. And he says they've got a raw sound and... Thurston says he found Frida for him and says she's in a raggedy-ass park on Newman Avenue, and she's just really not living a very good life at all. So this is kind of their way to turn her life around and make things better for her, because obviously she's not very living a very um, ideal life. And Lucius tells Jamal to focus on getting Hakeem back, and Jamal says at least Cookie was there when he needed him. And Lucius says if he wants his attention to do to do what he told him to do, and Lucius and Thirsty then, Thurston then roll out and basically... Cookie then finds Anika in her office, and Anika just, like I said, she has a very important decision to make, because obviously, Lucius just approached her about possibly turning against Cookie, but then Cookie has an offer that Anika really can't refuse either, because Cookie finds Anika in her office, she says Lucius thinks she still works there, she says Lucius reached out to her with a proposition, and Cookie says Lucius is not allowed at Empire, and then asks where she met her, and she says he's setting up a party at Lavictus, where he's setting up a big party for himself, and Cookie asks what he said that made her slither back to the ghetto, she says Lucius wants all the music from V, Tiana, Naraj Atois, and Hakeem, he wants all of it, he just, he wants to control everything, and... Anika says she wants to hurt Lucius, and Cookie actually laughs about this, and Anika goes to walk out, but Cookie calls her back and asks more about the party, and Lucius is throwing himself, and we see the party Lucius is throwing, and it's as obnoxious as you can imagine. Pitbull is singing at the party, and uh, I'm not a huge fan of Pitbull, I'm really not. I think he's good for what he's in, but I think this kind of just showed how Lucius is just trying to make this as big and extravagant as possible. And he introduces Jamal, they sing together, Lucius is hanging with some, with, um, some girls, and... Cookie's people set off some smoke bombs and take over the system, and this was awesome what Cookie did here. It's only something that Cookie could do, and I really love that. Because Cookie says welcome home, then introduces an artist who used to be one of Empire's top rappers, but now has his own sound. And of course, that is Hakeem, and he comes out rapping about Dynasty taking over, and Pitbull checks out the sweet rhyme, and I really like the song that Hakeem did, I definitely really liked it. Um, it might be one of his best by far. Not as good as Drip Drop, obviously. Drip Drop's, like, awesome. Um, but I still think it's one of Hakeem's best songs. And Lucius then watches with a sneer on his face, and Jamal's annoyed. A fight breaks out upstairs. Cookie has her DJ steal something from the sound system. Then Pitbull approaches Cookie and tells him to put her label on his New Year's show. And he says if she brings it like that, it's no problem. And Cookie heads out of there fast with what she took. And I don't think Briss is really going to come into play again, but I think it's just trying to show that Lion Dynasty is going to be successful. They're going to be successful. This could work out for them, and they're probably just going to end up as powerful as Lucius in the way they're going. I mean, just the way the Cookie's handling is is very smart and next day people are ringing off the hook for lion dynasty i mean this is a very funny scene here where cookie's getting all these calls at once and it, to the point where portia has to say not everyone can hear her talk at once and i thought that was very funny and sway then calls and basically it's exactly what cookie hoped would happen because he then basically cookie says they're bringing real hip-hop back valentine and the girls argue while hakeem watches the beef there are they don't like each other you can tell right away they don't like each other they don't like how they, they're trying to one-up each other definitely and they're definitely um not fans of one another so and it's understandable i mean they haven't had a lot of time together and they have to right now but they haven't had a lot of time together and basically, Andre shows up and says he's there to see Cookie, and Cookie tells Andre that he can come back there to him, but he says he belongs at Empire, that's where he wants to be, and then he says he has a vision for Empire that he'd be proud to leave his own child, and Cookie says that's what she's trying to do here, then is thrilled to hear that he's having a baby with Rhonda, and it's a very sweet scene, and she has to be told Lucius, and he says no, that's why he'd do that. She says that's why Lucius wants Hakeem back, because he wants a legacy, and he wants an heir, obviously, and 
She says he'll be thrilled with a grandchild, and Andre says he can't leverage his unborn child like that, and Cookie says sometimes you have to pull at hard strength to get paid and says nothing is wrong with that, and I do agree. I mean, sometimes to suck things up to people, you have to um, emotionally manipulate them. That's something that Lucius is very good at. I mean, just the way he gets people to basically feel sh like shit to get on his side is very interesting. That definitely is something that Andre needs to do more of, and I definitely do agree with Cookie saying that. So Andre sits with Lucius, who tells him he's persistent, and Lucius asks if he has something better than last time, and he tells Lucius that Ron is pregnant and he's going to be a grandfather, and Lucius asks if he's worried about the child's mental health, and Andre says bipolar doesn't run the family, but Lucius thinks about his own mom's crazy days, and again we see another flashback of his mom, um, and we can definitely tell that his mom probably had bipolar disorder, and that is probably why he does not accept Andre and why he doesn't trust him, because his mother clearly had some problems of her own, and that's probably why he most likely does not trust Andre, which I think is definitely very interesting. It, you know, they're definitely starting to explain why certain things are going on, like why he doesn't trust Andre. I definitely really like seeing that here. So... Lucius hugs him, says he always wanted a grandson, but then Lucius tells him that he's breaking his heart for using this to get what he wants from him, and he knows that he's not, you know, he knows that Andre's only doing this because Cookie put him up to, and Andre says he's not, he says he's just letting him know that there's more at stake than just him, and <sighs> Lucius tells him to give Ron his love and dismisses him, and you can tell that Lucius does not want to talk to him at all, and he's really pissed. And again, I felt very bad for Andre here. Now, while I think he was going to tell Lucius, he didn't want to tell Lucius, essentially. He, it was the right thing for him to tell him. He just, he approached it completely the wrong way, and he's just not as good at emotionally manipulating like Lucius or even Cookie. Cookie's very good at it, too. So, Lucius sits down at the piano, thinks about begging his mom to eat, but they have no food because she spent all their money on gifts, thinking it was his birthday when it wasn't. And that is also very interesting that we realize that. And... She definitely had bipolar disorder, you know, she didn't have food, she bought gifts for them. I definitely really like that. I have to say, Kelly Rowland, who plays uh, Lucius' mother, is doing a very good job um, with this role. I definitely would like seeing more of these flashbacks, and I feel as the season goes on, we're definitely going to see more and more, because I really like what they're doing with this. So Frida's in a street rhyme battle when Lucius shows up with his lawyer Thurston. The other guy raps about her dad being beat to death and Lucius steps up as she starts to pull a gun and basically the other guy just takes it way too far. Starts rapping about her dad being beaten to death and Lucius steps up. He's realizing that this is actually a very serious situation. He starts to pull a gun to shoot the guy. He wrestles her back, tells her to stop and says her dad didn't want this for her. Thurston says he they have to go and Frida says her dad was crazy and he doesn't know a thing about her and Lucius says she has a gift and begs him not to, to let him help her. She runs off, and Thurston says they have to go now, and basically that ended up very badly for them. So you can tell that Lucius really does want to work with Frida, but obviously Frida doesn't seem interested. You know, she seems like she's afraid, and it's going to take a lot more convincing, definitely. So Jamal tells Becky that the war between his parents is killing everything, including his music, and Becky asks what his problem is with the producers he keeps firing. Because, you know, he keeps firing all these producers for no reason, and she tells him he's being too picky, too short, too tall, then asks why he doesn't just call Cookie, and she says she's the only one who can deal with his moody ass, and I really like this scene because Becky, like I said, is a main character. And finally, we actually get a pretty interesting scene from Becky here, because Becky says he needs Cookie, and she loves him, and Lucius says to get Frida to him, and, you know, Cookie kind of is the emotional compass that kind of holds this entire family together. Had it not been for Cookie, I don't really feel Andre, Jamal, and Hakeem would be as close as they are right now, because mainly Cookie is the one that's brought them back together and kept them as a family, which I definitely really like. So Lucius says to get free to him, and Roxanne is there, and that's obviously bad news, and Thurston says it's his harassment, Lucius says he thinks she's sweet on him, then asks him to drop by so he can help her relive this tension, and Roxanne says that Vernon Turner hides away so he can't get to him, then says, and of course she doesn't know that Vernon is either dead or fatally injured, you know, she doesn't know what's happened to him. So we can't get him to then, she says a murder rap is only the beginning of what she has planned for him, and Obviously, she doesn't plan things going well for Lucius, and I definitely really like seeing that. I like seeing that someone actually wants to turn against Lucius and doesn't follow him like everyone seemed to, and I like that now we have a person that doesn't buy it for a second. That's not Cookie, that is. So, 
Lucia says she's gonna like what he has planned for her too. She leaves Skullfing, and Cookie then works on choreography with Hakeem's girl group. One of the funniest scenes in the episode by far. She works them hard. Valentina stops, says she's a singer, she's a singer, not a soldier. And Cookie says just because she's up with Hakeem doesn't mean she doesn't have to work for it. And Valentina says she deserves what she's got and doesn't need to sleep with someone. And Cookie says that's not what people will think if she blows it with Sway tomorrow. And Hakeem shows up, sees the results his mom got. He asks where she learned this. She says she learned it from prison. And I thought it was a very good scene, and I really liked uh, the scenes between, you know, I, I really liked this scene. I thought it was definitely a lot of fun. So, you do see, though, that there is a bit of a power, you know, there is a bit of a struggle between Cookie and Valentina. Obviously, Valentina doesn't really seem to like Cookie very much. She seems like she wants to be her own person and do her own thing, which I like seeing, but what she knows is that you're always going to be controlled by either Cookie Lion or Lucius Lion. It's just how they are. They're very controlling, manipulative people, and they always want to be involved in what's going on, especially Cookie. And, uh... Basically, that's what happened there. So, basically, Jamal then gets into a car with Lucius, and he asks how they knew about how he knew, and Lucius says he talked to Becky, and Lucius says Cookie tried to take Empire's building this company to hurt them, and Jamal says the music matters and says he's way past the producers he sent, and he needs a Cookie, and Lucius says he's past Cookie too. He says he's gone through dark corridors of humanity and says no woman or man can understand that, and he says Jamal needs a god to produce him, that says he's going to produce Jamal first, and Jamal says he won't play second fiddle, or Frida, or anyone else, and Lucius thanks him for pushing him, and it's actually a pretty sweet scene. I like the struggle between them, even though they are our main villains, they do a good job of getting us to care about them, and I definitely really like that. So, Cookie and Akeem are with Sway, but Valentina's late. Lucius shows up instead, says he bought Apex Radio, and he has now an interest in every urban station, and he really wants to hear their music, and Obviously, he's only doing this because he wants Empire. It's pretty obvious that's why he's doing this. And Lucius says they're going to have to learn the hard way. He says their artists will suffer. And Valentina shows up and Hakeem says his dad is taking hate to a whole new level. Then Lucius says he signed Valentina this morning. And she tells Hakeem sorry. Lucius tells her to go in there and shine. And obviously, he's now working with Valentina, so that's not good. Sway introduces her, and Lucia says her little label's gonna dry up and die, and Cookie glares at him, says she can't keep Cookie down, and Cookie tells Akeem to come as if, as, to come on as Valentina starts her number, and Lucia smiles as he watches her kill it, and basically they've just lost Valentina to Lucius, and that's how the episode ends. So overall, I thought this was a really great episode overall, not as good as the first two episodes. Like I said, it did very much feel like a premiere at times, but I really like seeing it. I like seeing Lucius back into that role, obviously, of this man that basically is just trying to play all of them. He's going to take the power from them. He's going to do whatever he can to get that power, obviously. That's what Lucius is all about. He's all about power. He's about control, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to control pretty much everything of what's going on, and that definitely is going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Let's talk about Andre. Is Lucius mad at Andre because his mother went through this? I feel like that's a big part of it, but is he just mad at him because of that? I definitely feel like that's why um, he pushes people away because his mom was like this, and I like that we're starting to find out more about Lucius, definitely. Is he going to be able to recruit Frida? I don't really know. Frida seems interested, definitely. She seems interested in what he wants to do with her, but she obviously seems kind of scared as well because of the people on her streets, and it's very busy, and she doesn't really know what's going to happen. So I can understand that she's a bit terrified of what's going on there. Um, Jamal. Jamal and Lucius working together, I definitely really do like it, but like I said, I do feel like this is just Lucius. Eventually, he's going to try to take that company from Jamal, and it's not going to be good. Roxanne is definitely on to Lucius. She's going to find a way to get Lucius back in jail. You know it's going to happen, because we know, that, of course, that he killed Bunky. So, you know, next week, it looks like Hakeem's going to start to wonder if he actually killed Bunky, and that's going to be very interesting. What is going to happen with this girl group? I'm pretty sure it's dead now, because Lucius just took Valentina, and Hakeem's definitely going to try to get her back. Obviously, if there's anyone that can get her back, it's Val it's Hakeem, because obviously she hates Cookie, pretty much. She really hates Cookie, and I, I thought that's pretty funny. Um, Anika, what is Anika going to do? She has a very tough decision. She can either ally with Lion Dynasty, or she's going to ally with Empire, and I feel like at this point she has to ally with Empire, because Lion Dynasty is like... It's not really a thing anymore. It's it's dying slowly, and I know Cookie doesn't want that to happen, but that seems like what's going on here is that Lion Dynasty is in the process of dying completely, and I don't see things really going well for them from here on out, which kind of sucks, but yeah, I think that is what's going to happen there. 
um, because Thurston seems like he's a very persistent lawyer, wants to do it's in, uh, Lucia's best interest, and I definitely think that's gonna be very interesting to see what happens with that, um, but the other girls from Miraja Trar, what is he going to do with them? Is Lucia gonna take these girls as well? Because obviously, they're in the group, so that maybe they can make it a, a duet group, I'm not sure, um, I, I don't think that Hakeem should give up on this just yet, though, I think even though he wants to, he should not give up on this yet, and I definitely think that he should maybe continue to, um, you know, continue making this group, because maybe get Tiana. Tiana probably is the person to get for this group, because she's really the only other person besides Valentina that really would stick out very well. And I know, you know, it's it's supposed to be unknown girls, and I know she probably stick out like a sore thumb, but it probably is their best idea is to get Tiana on board with this. Um, even though, you know, like I said, she probably stick out like a sore thumb because everyone knows her, and she would probably be the one that everyone comes to see the show for. Um, so it does have pros and cons like that. I also really loved um, what's going on with Andre. Is or going he going to be able to get Empire from Lucius? Obviously, Jamal wants it too, as does Rhonda. And we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. That's going to be very interesting. I really like the scene with Becky. I like Jamal's scene with Becky, definitely. Um, I thought it was a very powerful scene, and I definitely really like seeing that. And the struggle between Cookie and Lucius is always great. It's always great to watch. It's always fun to see them one-up each other, especially in this episode. It was awesome. I definitely really liked it. I thought they did a very, very fun job. The episode was a lot of fun at times, but also very dramatic. And it basically is the empire that I love. They're still on this fantastic... Um, you know, this fantastic streak of just great episode after great episode, and next week's looks great too. I can't wait for it. But let me know what you guys saw this episode. I thought this was an amazing episode overall. Like I said, it did at times feel like a premiere because, you know, Lucius is back in Empire and he's been in jail for two episodes, and now he's back, and it kind of feels like, you know, this was like, that was like the prologue to the season. This is where the actual season is starting. So. That's least my review. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know guys saw this episode. Overall, guys, I thought this was definitely a really amazing episode. Really loved it. And we'll see you guys in my next year, which will be for the season premiere of The Vampire Diaries, which I really don't know this is going to be. I'm hoping it's good. I don't know if it's going to be, but we'll have to see. And we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.